if I'm in the wrong place. Good luck getting out of here. I'm just getting out of the house. Uh, I'm supposed to deliver it Sunday. I'm supposed to deliver in Chicago in the morning. Load of bars out of Memphis. Uh, loaded those and just came home with them last Thursday. Decided I would take them up today. That's something I gotta fix. I can't stand all them lights out down there. But... So I do not know how the I don't know how the camera's gonna do being right there because uh, I don't think I've ran it right there in this truck since I've been driving it. And I don't think I made one little short video, but uh, like I say, we're going to head up Chicago, unload this in the morning, bounce over to Porter, Indiana, Worthington Steel, and get one going right back to Memphis, right back down the road from where these loaded. And that's what I did before is I unloaded in Memphis, bounced over to the new floor bar mill and picked these up. And uh, and then get on down the road. It always makes me nervous. This truck's a lot taller than the other trucks I've brought in here in the past. And uh, always where I'm gonna catch tree limbs. And this road going out from my house is, uh, you gotta watch it down through here too. I did a lot more oversized when I run a truck before and I always had strobe lights on the trucks that way I would run them all the way down this road right here just to get people's attention. It's hills and curves and all that stuff and it's a big truck for this little road. But um, been having an issue with the truck. I knew it was an issue when I bought it about it breaking the bolts off in the uh, breaking the bolts off in the um, air conditioning compressor that holds the AC bracket on. So I will be ordering the conversion kit to change it over to a late model AC compressor here before long. And it'll be should be a good video. I've never done it before. And, uh, and then I also have to do motor mounts. So, like I say, she's a 23 year old truck. She needs some TLC. But, anyway, I'm trying to run, also trying to run my GoPro on this trip for a dash cam because I don't have a dash cam. And uh, I don't have a dash cam and I you tried using this one before but it kept cutting off on me. So um, I don't know really how that's gonna do. This here is probably this here is probably the worst part of coming out. Uh, road gets really narrow, the limbs get really low. But it's it's not too bad. Just don't want to meet another big truck through here, that's for sure. That's the worst part of leaving home, once I turn out right here. 
everything, all good. I usually catch a couple of these right here. Or that one scratching the top of the ceiling. If I miss a gear, remember I haven't been in one of these things in four and a half years, so longer than this I drove a 13 speed, which I do prefer a 13 speed, but it's been a while. And I'm used to driving a coming kind of look coming a little bit more in the Detroit. guys that's what it entails me getting out of my house whenever it's time to go so i get on down the road here maybe i'll find something else interesting to show you guys cable driven make sure all my belts are tight and ain't nothing falling off on the front of the motor make sure all this stuff looks good take rocks out of the tire but that take all day good habit to get into though Cleaned off one there in front of the GoPro, but I don't know if that's gonna help you guys out much or not. This bolt right here is the one that's been giving me issues, that's been breaking off. And I hear that's a pretty common thing on a Detroit. I've seen a couple other Detroits had the bolt broke off too, but I just can't stand it. So I'm thinking we're gonna change that over to a different style compressor. Check mole, all that stuff was good. Yeah, I believe we're ready to go and that guy's having issues his, he can't get his fire up that's a bad feeling when you're stuck on a fuel line all right also double check my boxes make sure they ain't trying to come off where at Weddy road to beat your truck to that gun death seem like it knocked anything loose Well, I know you guys aren't gonna believe this, but I'm running behind. It is nine o'clock, uh, three hours to get up here and get delivered, and then turn around and make it over to Porter, Indiana, but hours slept. Fuel receipt, I have a binder here that's got like different 
uh, sections to it. I got one for fuel receipts, one for repairs, one for parts, one for uh, whatever I'm doing, one for miscellaneous stuff, such as, well, whatever. I got one for tolls. Anything that I need to write off on my taxes goes in this. When I get home, I've got a bigger version of this. I scan them in, put them on the computer, and then I label each receipt. I rename the file, like if you do a picture, and you can rename that picture to say whatever. I rename the file and put all the information off that receipt on to the name of that file. That way if I go in, if I buy an injector for, if I go into my computer and I type in injector in the little search bar on the bottom left hand corner, it brings up every injector I've ever changed on any truck. And if I want to see for my 96 Freightliner that I used to run, I just type in 96 Freightliner and it'll pull up every injector that I ever put in it. If I want to see every number two, position number two injector that I put in, 96 Freightliner position number two, it brings that up and then that'll show where I bought it, how much I paid for it, what the date was, and all that stuff. But it works for me. It's a lot of work, but it does work for me. Um, it is 8.55 Central Time. Oh. And yes, I'm on actual, literal paper log. So, that's taking a little time to get used to. I'm so used to using the Motive app. And my eyes are getting... I can see far away still pretty good, but stuff this close to me... Yeah, I'm having to start using readers and stuff. So that's not good. And I'm in Remington, Indiana. I planned on going further than this last night by a little bit, but not thinking about it. Transferred too much money off my fuel card. So the discount here is pretty significant. So instead of buying fuel cash out of pocket, I just stopped here, waited for the dispatcher to come in this morning. I texted him last night as soon as he came in, he put the money on my card. So Remington, Indiana. Fuel. Pre-trip. Fuel, free trip inspection. Write that down. And then I'm 96 miles, two hours. I'll look it up on Google Maps because it does better on traffic. Now, if anyone sees this big, big GPS that I've got mounted right here, the Ram McNally Overdrive 8 Pro, I think it is, that thing's a piece of junk. Ever since the day I bought it, I've had to send it back multiple, many times. They had it about as much time as I had it the first year and a half. They've replaced batteries, they've replaced everything. And whether it's on the dock that came with it, it's horrible as far as charging. It won't keep the battery charged up. The battery will go dead while it's plugged in as you're going down the road. And they say, well, your vehicle's not putting out enough voltage. I have tried it multiple vehicles, multiple different chargers, multiple different everything. And the only way it'll work is if you plug it in with a micro USB and um, plug it in with a micro USB and, and plug it straight into a high output charger. And then it still loses power through the day. It just doesn't go dead on you halfway through the day. And uh, I know multiple people that did like I did whenever they came out thinking it was going to be one of the better purchases that we've made. You know, it's Ram McNally. The maps are, the maps are pretty good but the device itself is horrible and it doesn't matter what the maps are like if you can't get them to work, if the device is always a given issue. So um, everyone I know that has one has to do it like what I'm doing and most people have already thrown, their, thrown theirs in the trash and I didn't throw mine in the trash. I just um, haven't had a need for it while I was doing RV transport. I, pull it out and use it every now and again. I always kept it charged up and powered off. So if I did need it, I could turn it on, look at it, and put it back up. 
But yeah, I like the headache rack on this truck right here. My next one is gonna be a Garmin. I'll try that out. Yeah, that's a nice headache rack. But uh, so we're going to Ornell Forge and Chicago, Illinois. I don't know if I'll be able to get any video of them unloading this or anything when I get there because it seems like every place that I go, anytime I've tried to do a video since I started flatbed, everywhere I go I have big signs up that says no cameras. So that messes me up at that point. I'm already either in a hurry or running behind and I get frustrated and I just say screw it, I'll do a video later on. I don't know where this guy's going. Dang. I guess he decided not to stop, but they sure messed me up. There's lines of traffic coming for you. You can see from both directions now. Unless I can beat that white truck out. Okay. Well, I guess they turned too. That worked out good for me. Old truck seems to be a good truck. It does have some rattles in the dash, but it is open up to buy alcohol, so I'm not holding it against it. I'm used to driving a Super 10 or a straight 10. I learned on the 13. The first two, three trucks I drove were 13 speeds, but if I get to where I'm not thinking about it, I get in the habit of shifting that Super 10. The difference is, the Super 10, the gears are way apart, so when you shift, you'll move the button, the thumb button, and go forward, and when you go to come back in, the gears are further apart. That messes me up really bad. On this, on a 13 speed, you don't even really have to take the stick out of gear and put it back in gear. All you really have to do is flip that button forward, let off the accelerator, but I am so used to shifting and moving the stick out of gear and then moving it back into gear, it messes me up. That, and not to mention it has been four years since I drove a truck without it. So, move a button forward, come out right back in, move a button back, move a stick back, move a button forward, stick forward right back in. I get the hang of it, it just, uh, I ain't gonna say getting the hang of it because I learned on one of these, but it's going back to Button forward, out, right back in. Where on a super can, like say, you'll come out, wait a second, go back in. It takes it further, longer for the RPMs to drop. That guy moved over to let me out, and this guy was pulling off the shoulder. That Looked like it was gonna get rough there for a minute. There's all 13 years. Like I say, maybe in another month or so, I'll have it and I'll quit. I'll quit uh, trying to shift it like a super pin. And just in case anybody wondering my opinion on super pin, I do not like them. They seem to be bulletproof. I've never torn one up. But the steps between the gears are too far apart. Everybody says, oh, once you learn to shift it, you'll be fine. I'm like, hell, I've been driving it for four freaking years. You know, you can't learn to shift something that, if something, if the gears are too far apart, you can't learn to make them closer together. Uh, my, my personal opinion is again. Uh, there are a couple of people out there that seem to love Super 10 and God bless them, I hope they get every one of them. But I'm not one of those people. Seems like you have to over rev the engine to get the RPMs high enough so that whenever you shift, you're not lugging the engine on the bottom end and then you still wind up lugging the engine on the bottom end and over revving on the top end because the gears are just too far apart. That's my personal opinion. That's why I do prefer a 13 speed but I will take a nine, a straight nine or a straight 10 any day over a Super 10. Now, I've driven 18 speed. I like an 18 speed. 
I don't have a use for an 18 speed for the majority of the time. For me, my opinion is an 18 speed is a uh, good transmission for if you're doing a lot of off road, like job sites and stuff. That's for 18 speed. 18 speed really shines in my book because you have the deep reduction on the load. Or you have, you can split the gears on top and bottom. Well, I don't have my microphones on, but I am here. Cornell Forge, right there on the right. But I do not know where I'm supposed to go to get unloaded. So, is that still deliveries turn on that road? So I'm going to back up and make that tight little turn right there. Yes.
at the back. have a mismatched number of boards and they're also mismatched sizes so I don't really like how all that's leaning but it ain't going nowhere and I will check it as I go to make sure it doesn't loosen up the reason I'm using a snap binder instead of a ratchet binder up there I don't like my ratchet binders being out in the weather those things are pretty much indestructible um, but I got to get my coil rack my dunnage rack put on they go down here I've got one I just don't have it put on and the reason I put these up here is for one my chain's not long enough to go around all them boards so I put this one right here because I'll be using it to load that coil here in a few minutes and I didn't drag my racks out because uh, it just works better like this I set it all up when I get over to the truck stop by Worthington but anyway I guess we're ready to go now if you're if it's available I recommend always dumping the air off the suspension of the truck and trailer when you're getting loaded or unloaded. That way it's not uh, letting the airbags pop up and overextend and all that stuff. So there were two other trucks just pulled up and I'm in their way. So I'm gonna try to try to get out of here so I'm out of their way and we can get heading on over to Worthington to pick up their coil. Ooh, jump the curb, jump the curb. I hope there's enough room for us to pass right here. big old hole over there on the right trying to miss that I don't think when they made these roads they were really considering the size of vehicles we're going to go to in the future the windows up maybe y'all hear me a little better but guys I've been trying to figure out how to do more video in the truck and with time and everything else is such a big factor I've been rushing around trying to get back in the swing of things, pulling the flatbed and get used to the truck and its quirks and all that stuff. But I'm gonna go ahead and end this video right here and uh, I will start another one on the low going back down to Memphis. I believe I figured out that's the way I wanna do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I don't plan on these, none of my videos are how-to videos. It's, they're all just me sharing my experiences, hoping that somebody gets something out of it, somebody to help somebody out, or somebody might enjoy watching or whatever, you know? So, uh, like the way I strap and chain things down, that's just my way of doing it. That's how I've been doing it for a long time. I'm not trying to make how-to videos. But anyhow, uh, and a lot of these places, they have the no camera stuff up everywhere. I did not see any no cameras, no recording stuff at that place. That's why I went ahead and recorded that. But I know where I'm going to next. They don't want cameras in the building, anywhere close to the building. So anyway, guys, I'm going to get off here, watch my, watch my maps, and try to figure out how to get back out to the interstate, get on over and get this next load loaded, and I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching.